Well, the McDonald family has been on quite a roll the last 48 hours. Now, uh, you guys, most of you know that I won with Sintra in Prince Edward Island. That was a huge win for me, and, and I was interviewed afterwards. And I said, you know, I, I don't get too animated. You know, uh, when James won the won the Canadian Pacing Derby, and you know, he gave the fist pump and whatever. I just I remember looking at that, and, and I was it was cool because it's so emotional. But I just didn't ever see myself doing that. I'm just not that guy. But you know, I I think it was just I had been beaten so many times. Yeah, you know, they're all like cold. Addie is not dead, by the way. She is just sleeping. Um, I, I think I've just been beaten so many times in the Gold Cup that I just shoved it all down, right? And the, and there's obviously I'm a I'm a Prince Edward Island boy at, at heart, and um, you know I, I want to win every race. I mean, but everybody deep down wants to win the Gold Cup. It's just one of those races where it's it's really elusive, and I didn't realize how elusive until. Yesterday, when I was told 13 times I lost in the Gold Cup in Saucer, 13 times I was in it. Now, in fairness, uh, there was only a handful of times I had a shot to win. A lot of long shots, as you can imagine, when I was younger. Um, a handful of times, and I was beat a, a neck at the wire, even a, a head or a nose, with Attaboy Dan. Oddly enough, Ron Burke trained Attaboy Dan for the Gold Cup that year. That was a different year also. That was a year where the races were canceled on Saturday night. This flash flood, this monsoon blew through. Literally, we were on the track parading for the Gold Cup on Saturday night. And it, you could see it coming. You could hear the thunder and the lightning, but you know, you hear it and there's nothing going on. You're like, oh, we, we missed it. It was on its way in. And I, you could see it. You could see it just come across the track. It was the weirdest thing. And it rained as hard as I've ever seen it rain for, you were there, it had to be 45 minutes or an hour. Well, it, it, there was an hour, I'll never forget it, there, to go out, to, if you've ever been to Charlottetown, you can go around the town on the, on the bypass, right? I take it all the time because it's, you know, stoplights one out. So I always take the bypass. Well, there's a little part, portion of the bypass, there's an underpass uh, going under a road. At just outside Charlottetown and by the time we had got there it was closed there was like five feet of water built up I've never seen anything like it it, it I remember at the time thinking it, and I believe it still is accurate I don't think I've ever in my life seen more water fall that quickly than I did that night in Charlottetown and there was, so the races are canceled they're going to have them the next day and I remember coming to the track and thinking to myself there's no betting or did they have betting no there's no betting. How many people are going to show up on a Sunday in Charlottetown for a race you can't bet on? I believe there was more people there on Sunday afternoon than there was on Saturday night. It was the craziest thing I've ever seen. Anyway, I got beat. I finished second. And it didn't dawn on me. It, it didn't dawn on me at all that I had lost 13 times. But I'll tell you what, uh, it was pretty emotional halfway down the lane. I... I knew, I thought I was a winner at the eighth pole. I knew that Patrick was our other horse. We'll talk about him. Patrick De Piranha. He's not a 20 minute post grade horse. Not many horses are. That's, that's the big the big equalizer for the Gold Cup and Saucer. What horses can stay composed? Because they have the post braid. They have that long drawn out spotlight post braid. It's a lot for a horse. It wasn't for Century. He walked all the way around the track and it was like he would he was literally stopping for selfies along the way. It was, it was incredible how composed Sintra was. I probably I said it after, probably the coolest horse I've ever seen in my life. And and after he won the race in one fifty and one, raced as hard as he could, and rather than turn and go around back to the winner's circle, I went around the whole track because the the vast majority of people are on the other side. I literally walked them all the way down the fence line and he was stopping and taking pictures with people along the way and I just remember thinking to myself it's the coolest thing I ever saw a horse do in my life like I wanted to, to just acknowledge the crowd you know because it meant a lot to me I wanted to let people that wanted to get to the winter circle get to the winter circle and it wasn't until I started just to jog him slow you could see him his ears are up and he's 
right up against the fence and I stopped him. I saw a lady looking to take a picture and I stopped him. I said, you want a picture with him? And she goes, absolutely. <laughs> and it was almost like he turned and smiled at her. It, it, he's, he's, I've never seen a horse with that demeanor in my life. And, you know, I talk about him as if we've known him a long time. I forget, as you forget, we've only had him seven, eight weeks. He, he is definitely a special kind of horse. And uh, just, I, I just, I've been around horses my whole life. I don't think I've ever seen one quite like that horse. The way he acted on Saturday night was well beyond professional. It was, like I said, it was just cool. He was a cool horse. And the opposite side of that was Patrick. It's not Patrick's fault. He's not a bad horse or anything. He just gets wound up. He's a very excitable animal. And by the time they got through that post parade, I could see him. Leaping, yeah, leaping, yeah, leaping and throwing himself, and we're going to the, we're about to go to the gate. Wally said, "Big fella, sharp." I find him better when he's a little subdued, right? You see how Bruce Red Ranger drives him, and it wasn't Wally's fault. It's just the horse. The horse was hot last night. I felt bad for him too. You know, Wally's, you know, Wally's much older than me, but. Still, he's got that island kid inside him. He's won the Gold Cup once before, but was the favorite going to the gate with Patrick. Now, I know, I kind of know both horses, and I knew that Patrick would be a little excitable. I didn't know whether Wally would try and hold position. Likely, you're on a half mile track, you got the two hole, you're the favorite. The horses to beat you on the outside of you. Yeah, he's going to leave. And honestly, we got halfway around the first turn, and I could tell how fast we were going. And it was pretty clear that Wally was trying to put. Um, young Austin Sori in behind him and he was having no part of it at that point I wasn't even out of the first turn and I knew I was winner of the Gold Cup and Saucer you know you can always Sintra can get make a break or broken equipment or something can happen but this calm came over me because I knew that if something weird didn't happen to my horse I was likely going to win the Gold Cup. The two horses that I was worried about are just about to empty each other out. And I don't really think Jody's horse can beat me. Yeah, Cintra was the class of the field regardless. And then when you have two of the key components of, of, of the problem you face killing each other on the front end, you know, James and Mark were right. Somebody said, oh my God, it was so brilliant following the three. That wasn't even my plan. It, it was heading into it, but when the draw came out, it was Mark and James said the same thing. Mark first, and James agreed. Follow the three, let them kill each other, move them, jog. It went exactly how we scripted it on draw day. Now, my plan in my head was follow the three and quarter pull them to the front. And James says, no, 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 Cintra, Cintra likes to... And I'd never driven Cintra in my life. And James only drove him once, but James raced against him lots. I never raced against him. I'd never jogged him. I'd never trained him. I'd never sat behind the horse. He said, no, he loves to have a target. So when we're going around the first turn, and I got two giant targets in front of me, unfortunately, I didn't know that that Patrick Leprano would eventually make a break. And for those of you out there worried, I saw some social media posts, so I hope Patrick's out. Patrick's fine. There's nothing wrong with Patrick. He didn't flip his heart. He made a break. And he was hot. That was his biggest problem. That's always his biggest thing was his demons. And he's not crazy, but mentally, mentally, there's quite a difference. Mentally, there's quite a difference between Citra and Patrick the Prime. And that was never more on display than last night. And that, that's just not Patrick. What Citra did last night is rare. I don't mean to win the Gold Cup. I don't mean 15-1. I mean, to stay not just composed, but happy all through the post parade. I've never, I've driven to 13, 13 of them. I've never seen a horse do that. Not one time, never in my life. And that was the deciding factor. Patrick the Piranha is every bit as fast as Sintra. But when you're on the track for 20 minutes and you're getting wound up for 20 minutes, the race was over 10 minutes into the post parade for Patrick. So I was hoping he would pop out and finish second or third, but obviously he made the break when he went to move him. 
So I got to fulfill a lifetime dream. And as I said, I didn't, I didn't see it as a dream because I was honest. I was as honest as I could be with you. I was the third choice as the driver. I offered it to James. I offered it to Mark. And you can be sure both of those guys would have won the Gold Cup with him. I took it. I, I was the third driver on the horse, and I was I was happy to drive him. But I know how bad that both of them wanted it too. So James, I know, didn't have a great night last night at Mohawk, but. Um, you know, that weighs on you too when you make a decision it turns out to be the wrong one. And Mark had a terrible night in Poconos and had a terrible night for us. That's, that's, he didn't have a terrible night, I guess. You know, I'll get to that in a second. But I'll, I'll, I'll conclude with saying you can see, and I'm not a, I'm not a super emotional guy on the track, but it did bubble up a little bit, you know, halfway down the lane. Um, I knew the race was wrapped up and, and I think 13 starts of getting the shit kicked on <laughs> me really caught up to me and, and the elation of, of finally winning the race it, it caught up to me in, in blink of an eye so it meant a lot to me and I'm, I'm glad you know I had said it in a number of interviews after and I don't know if it'll come out anywhere but the CBC or some obscure magazine but I, I, I again said how humbled I was that, you know, the only reason I was allowed to have Sintra, Patrick the Prana, and a, and a host of other horses was because of, you know, horse racing people, our people, the stable.ca. And when you look through the winner's circle, you didn't even get a fair glimpse of how many people that our clients were there, how many of their friends and family, my family, my friends. It was, the, the, the winner's circle couldn't hold them all. It's a big winner's circle. And it made a point a number of times to reference fractional ownership and how it, it is the way forward for horse racing and how I hoped other people would would follow in our footsteps or, or, or make their own, but at least uh, start down that path of fractional ownership. So that was the that was the word I had for, uh, for anybody that wanted to talk to me after the race. I was super excited, very happy, happy for my family, my father. And uh, obviously Jamie Smith, who had worked in, been a friend of mine who worked for me and with me for decades, I've known him for 30 years or more, and his wife Angie, who is Mike McDonald's brother, or Mike McDonald's daughter, sorry, and Mike McDonald uh, was a guy that, you know, I tried to emulate, that I tried to be a lot like, that I learned a lot from, and a guy that has won five gold cup and saucers, he passed away a year and a half, two years ago. Uh, but just really been the bar as far as horsemanship from when I was a kid. Uh, you know, winning the Gold Cup, being in the Gold Cup, getting quality horses. Mike McDonald was the guy you wanted to be and, and uh, you know, to win that trophy meant a lot to me. So that was Sintra and uh, that was obviously, it was definitely a highlight. You know, when I look at things that I've accomplished in my life, marrying my wife, having my children, are obviously going to be always going to be one, too. And uh, I think an easy layup for third is uh, starting the stable.ca with all of you. So um, with that, we're going to move past Citra now. Uh, I talked to you about Patrick the Piranha. He's fine. Patrick's problem was in the post parade, was just getting keyed up and wound up, and, and he boiled over. And it doesn't matter how old you are, you can get it. If you're an excitable horse, you get overly excited. It takes its toll. So he'll stay on the grass for another four or five days at PEI, and he'll head out Friday to Saratoga. Sintra leaves tomorrow for um, back to Harry's, Harry Poulton, Harry Poulton's barn. Goes out saying, too, I hope they, they find the portion of the interview where I, I talked about, you know, having a guy like Harry Poulton prepare your horse for a big race. A guy who's no stranger to big races. Uh, it's certainly not no stranger to the preparation for them. You, know, you think about all the horses he had when I was a kid growing up on the road again and Matt Scooter too, just two to name. Um, so you could always go worse than have uh, you could always go worse than have Harry Bolton training your horses. He's done a fantastic job for us. All our guys have this year. Mario, Jason, Dominic, Harry. You know, it's just been a tremendous year. Hopefully we can keep it going. And, you know, make no mistake, the caretakers and, the, and those trainers 
are the reason that, that we had the success we have um, with the horses that we have. So, um, Patrick DePrano was good. You know, we look up to Mohawk. I was a little mad. Uh, I know, I said this last night, that I know James would rather have that race back with Carter Michael Dio, but that's the way the cookie crumbles. Um, when I look at the overall performances last night, the only horse really that was a little lackluster, I thought, was Brace for Landing, and there's got to be a reason for that. The horse was sensational at the Meadows. He trained great here last week. We'll get to the bottom of what went on with Brace for Landing, but truthfully speaking, I, I thought Landing Strip was flat. Then I go and look at his line. You know, last half in 55-2, and two, last quarter 27-2. and two. The horse never seen speed like that before. So he was all right. Horn player, 56 and 4. She's never seen speed like that. So again, an improvement there. Nothing but a dreamer, I think we all know, was 1, 2, or 3. Um, 1, 2, or 3. Uh, if he had a got clear sailing from the head of Lane to the wire. As it turned out, he ended up fourth. Now they're doing an open draw for the fourth place. Somebody said it's the fastest horse. And no, it's not. They're going to have three horses, theoretically, in a hat. But one of them out. And that's who the tenth horse is. Uh, and the other two horses are also eligible, one and two. So um, I hope nothing but a dreamer gets in. He looked some kind of good the other day. He looked very, very good. Really impressed with the horse he's become. Um, what else do we have? Brace. Uh, Horn. Nothing but a dreamer. Landing strip. And Carter. Yeah. So landing strip I thought raced good. And Carter was obviously a little disappointing with that break. As I said, I know James would probably want to have that race back. But... We don't get to get them back. Um, but overall, again, uh, showing some improvements with those horses. Not, yeah, I wanted to win one or two legs. I wanted to, you know, I wanted to show off our horses. Instead, I think the one that probably had the best chance of winning made a break. And uh, the other horses would have showed up just fine. You know, if Carter Michael Dio ends up second and nothing but a dreamer second or third, and the other two horses race the way they did, I think everybody's happy. It just didn't work out that way last night. But they'll all have a chance to redeem themselves next week, the Pennsylvania ones anyway. We got a big, big week coming up. Pennsylvania is all the big, all the firepower of ours will be at the Meadows next Friday in the Sire Stakes and Stallion Series action. That's the last leg of the Stallion Series and the Sire Stakes. Most of our horses are already guaranteed berths like Crantini, Spitfire Overseas. Um, now Carter, big question mark there. I don't know what Ronnie wants to do with him. I'll talk to him later on today. And then a lot of people said, well, Austral Hanover, we should race him in the in the Sire Stakes because if you just get a few more points, you know, you make it in the, in the Constellation. Okay, so what if I finish third and make it in the final? I don't really want to race Austral Hanover against Grantini. I think we just put him in where he can win, which is the Stallion Series. Roll the dice and say, okay, we'll enter him in the Grassroots Constellation, the Stallion Series Constellation, and we'll see how it goes. I think that's the best way to go. I'm not going to jeopardize having him in a position to win for, you know, trying to sneak our way into the into the Sire Stakes Constellation. Having said that out loud, if Carter Michael Dio can race, he should race in the Sire Stakes and see if we can get him in the Constellation also. So, that's where we're at with those horses. They are going to race this week. We did have some horses coming out of the field, freshening up, sharpening up. Now that I think about Megan's uh, burn out loud, I know she said she trained and Ty went on 58, was going to qualify her in 56. Thought she was much, much better, so she was happy with her. She thought Grantini came out of the race very well, and more than you know, was in to go this week also. What do we else do we got over here, honey? With the PA quotes talked about. Oh, I'm going, to, I'm going to end our opening video with the bookend of our open horses. Sintra looked fantastic last night. What about Kings County? What kind of good work has he been doing? in uh, Ohio now. Locatelli, it's hard to compare the two right now because Kings County looks infinitely better. But I think you're going to see Locatelli get better and better and better and better. Now, is he good enough to be in the Maple Leaf Trot this weekend? Maybe, maybe not. I want to say yes, but um, I could be wrong. But he's going to try. So he is going to the Maple Leaf Trot. A lot of people may say, well, you know, he's going to be a long shot. Yep, he's going to be a long shot. But as we've already talked about many, many times, long shots do win. And if you think that you can't jump up and trot in 51 and a piece or 52 off the right fractions, then I guess I'll disagree because I think he can. And I don't think they're going 49 or 50. I think they're going 51, 51 and a piece. I saw a lot of the horses staying in Kentucky for all the money, so 
I don't know that that uh, I don't know what kind of horses would be attracted anyway. I think it'd be a little more watered down than, than we're used to for the Maple Leaf Chop. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe all the best horses will come. I don't know. But Locatelli is definitely going to the Maple Leaf Chop. Kings County is not. A lot of people, uh, one of our clients, David, tried to you know convince me to take him. I said no. I said I left it up to Stacy and Brett. And they said they'd rather not take the horse to Canada. They'd rather race him in the, in the Charlie Hill in Sayota and then probably the one in Indiana. Makes sense to me. I'm perfectly okay with that. So that's exactly what we are going to do with, uh, with, excuse me, yeah, I could yawn. I haven't slept. Well, how long has it been, honey? 36 hours we're going on? It'll be 36 hours by the time we get to Ohio. 36 hours, no sleep. None. And I mean none. Um, last night after the race, the only way that we can make it back for Ollie's tournament, Ollie's sleeping right now, they got beat in the final. His team played well. They had the lead, and the other team came back and beat them by a run in, in extra innings. Uh, Ollie played good. His whole team played good. You know, there was a couple of tournaments ago where they kind of kicked the ball around a little bit, to be honest. But not today. They played good. They played fair. Ollie had some good hacks at the ball. Um, and, and made some really good catches when he's playing pitcher there. Thing. My wife's falling asleep. No, she's asleep. Everybody's on cold but me now. So, um, he had some good hacks at the plate, made some good catches, made some good throws, had a good day, but unfortunately his team came up a little bit short and finished second. So he probably feels like Jody did last night. <laughs> Uh, that's not fair. I know Jody's been in a lot of Gold Cups also. And, uh, you know, as I said, I I didn't think it affected me that much until I got halfway down the lane last night. So uh, a great night last night. It's just been a, a tremendous year for all of us. Uh, a, a huge 2022. We started off with a great end of 2021. Um, we do have a new horse. I bought a new horse today. You guys thought that I was just going to run up here on no sleep and not and not do anything. I bought a horse today. Uh, same type of horse. Now, Steve, one of our clients, Steve Palermo, you guys hear me talk with Steve all the time. Um, Steve had said, well, don't you have enough of those non horse two, three trotters? You really can't because if you have talented ones, you can move their way up, right? I think Blue Tesla's got a great avenue to go to Mohawk. But even if she didn't, she could win two, one or two more starts. We could sell her if we wanted to. And she's worth quite a bit more than we paid for her. So that's a good story. When you start buying horses that fit those classes, it's really value. It's value-based. What's our exit strategy? What's best case? What's worst case? What's likely? What does that look like? And where do we go from here? And that's really what I look at when I look at these horses. We had bought one the other day, sold it right away. Um, Blue Test has been doing good things. Should be back next week. This horse, Bravura, I bought it in Indiana. A three-year-old explosive matter, Pennsylvania bred. Philly. Actually, yes, Blue Tesla is an explosive matter also. So don't draw conclusions between the two horses because they said they're both by explosive matter. I'm not trying to do that. I think Blue Tesla was bet, was bought with similar lines to this horse, but has really excelled since you got to Northfield. I like, I don't think this horse's lines are as good as Tesla. I'm wrong. Similar, not quite. That mile that they show the video on, on gate from June, that looked like a good mile, really, really good mile. And I talked to Jay Hostetler after, and he was pretty clear that, um, you know, this horse's problem is exactly what he broke down. Can't find any classes. I see a lot of Indiana breads on the sale board now. The reason being, if you're not a state colt and you're not like an open Indiana three-year-old trotter, it's a way, way down to the next level and a lot of stuff in the middle. A lot of people trying to make things work in the middle. It's just impossible to do. So they don't. They don't get it done. So, uh, Bravura, I think the horse's name, we paid $25,200 or $100, $200, something like that. For the filly, she has a huge allowance also. She'll race likely in Northfield Park, the exact same class that Blue Tesla just got out of. That's my plan with her and the other filly that we bought the other day. There's tons of places to race these horses. I think if you find the right horse for the right dollar, I think you're, you're, you're cooking with gas, as they say. And I believe that's what we've done now. We don't need a bunch more of them right now. But I think those three horses in particular would do us some real, real good. So with that, I'm going to let you guys go. Uh, I guess what we have to look forward to now is today, racing. Stake race is coming up. 
and then it won't be long now before it's Lexington. I'll be starting to do some videos about some horses, not about specific yearlings, just talking about what we're trying to do with the groups of buckets, how we're going to work that out, how that's going to play out, and what I see that looking like in Lexington. So again, to the frizzles that drove Amy and I over to Moncton, thank you very much, lifesavers, because otherwise I would have had to drive. Now, I was in pretty good spirits, so I probably could have got us there. But then uh, my parents' car, one of my parents' cars would be stranded and they have to go get it. So a huge thank, thanks to them, to them for doing that for me. Uh, I really appreciate it. Uh, all our clients for coming out. Tom was down at PEI. Um, just the whole two days meant a lot to me, I can tell you that. I wish it was 10 days, but it wasn't. I'll take the two days I had, though. Just uh, a lot of fun. Uh, a great time, got to catch up with some old people I haven't seen in a while, and uh, very fortunate. So thank you again for allowing me to do that. I'm glad it worked out for all of us, whether you're a member of the Cinter Group or whether you just watched the race and hopefully cheered us on. It was a great night to be a part of the stable.ca. So I will talk to you guys later. I'm going to do a two-year-old video, a three-year-old video, an age stores video. I, I'm sorry, I'm not going to do the stables again this week because it's 4 o'clock on a Sunday. I, I left my phone with PDI, to be honest. It has all the stables on it. I can write them out by hand, but truthfully, cut me some slack and give me one more week uh, with no stables. With everything, we're running the roads here, and I literally am going on 33 hours with no sleep. Um, it'll be 36 by the time we get to Ohio. But you know what? I wouldn't change a thing. So thank you again. I truly appreciate it. I hope you guys had a great weekend. I know I did. Take care.